Hi, Peter Jones, Chartered Surveyor, Author and Property Investor. And in this short series of videos, we're looking at how we can achieve our best year ever, preferably our best year ever in property in 2018. And in the last video, we recognised that unless we start to plan now for success in 2018, at best, 2018 is just going to be yet another mediocre year, or maybe worse, which I'm sure none of us really want. But we also saw that by planning now, we can potentially make 2018 our best year and our best year in property. But the key question, of course, is what does that actually mean in practice? Well, I'd suggest that the answer lies in a simple five-step process which I've used over the years and which looks like this. Step number one, decide what we really want. Step number two, set goals to achieve what we really want. Step number three, make a plan to achieve those goals. Step number four, take vigorous and persistent action on the plan. Yes, action which is vigorous and persistent. We've got to make sure that it really happens. And then number five, regularly review progress and tweak the plan as necessary. Now, outlining the plan as a number of bullet points like that might make it seem simple. But don't be fooled. It's also extremely powerful. And if we follow it, we can often achieve far more than we realise is possible. However, the bad news is that very few people actually follow the system properly, even if they do try to follow it at all. Many of us just give lip service to it. Take, for example, deciding what we really want. We might think, well, that's obvious, isn't it? Don't we all know what we really want? Well, at a superficial level, yes. But unfortunately for a lot of us, that's where it stops. Now, I have in the past mentored and coached many property investors one-on-one, -on -one, and commonly one of the things I've noticed is that people who are very earnest and genuine in their desire to succeed in property hadn't really thought through what it was that they, they really wanted to achieve. They hadn't really thought through what property success actually meant for them. In other words, they hadn't really thought about and identified what it was that they really wanted and how property was going to provide what they wanted for them. So often they'd have a vague idea like they wanted to make some money, or they wanted to own some properties, or perhaps they wanted to build a nest egg as a pension, or perhaps they wanted to generate a bit of income. And all of these are worthy in themselves, but if you think about it, it just sounds like a wish list. It's very non-specific. And if it's non-specific like that, it's going to be very difficult to actually translate those wishes into goals, particularly tangible goals, which we can then plan to achieve. I should say I have some sympathy because in the past I've had a wish list like that. And I know that sometimes my mentees once were a little bit vague just because they weren't entirely sure what property could do for them, especially if they are relatively new to property. They obviously thought that getting into property was a good thing, perhaps because their friends had told them to, or maybe the headlines in the newspaper had told them that prices were going to keep going up, or perhaps they'd watched a TV programme where somebody had made some money from doing a property up. But when I pressed them, they didn't know exactly what they could actually achieve. And interestingly, I meet many people who get into property without fully knowing what it is that they want to achieve, and so they drift. Determining and deciding what you want to achieve is a crucial starting point, but surprisingly, many people just gloss this over. And the trouble is that with nothing specific to aim for or to achieve, the inevitable result is that they achieve far less than they could or should if they just had something tangible to aim for. But assuming that we do know what we want, what then? Well, then there's a whole process of goal setting, which again can be problematic, especially for property investors. Even if we form precise financial goals which we want to achieve, articulating our financial goals as property goals can be a stumbling block for many property investors or would-be property investors. This is especially true if we're starting out with limited experience in property and we aren't entirely sure what we can expect to make from property for example, from a specific property or from a specific type of property or by following a specific property strategy or technique. That's why I've refined the process to include this step in my home study course and resource, Goal Setting to Property Success in Five Simple Steps, which I'll tell you about in a later video. 
We need to set goals, but as I get more and more experienced in this process, I realise that success isn't just down to setting goals, it's about the quality of the goals that we set. And by the way, please don't switch off at the mention of goal setting. I know that goal setting can seem a bit OTT and a bit old hat, but it's absolutely fundamental to our success. I'd be prepared to bet that at least 95% of successful people, and probably actually 99% of successful people, have got to where they are through goal setting, whether they have a recognised formal system of goal setting, or whether they just do it instinctively. So if it works for them, there's a great chance that it's also going to work for us. And one thing I do know is, when I set goals, I usually achieve them. When I don't set goals, I don't. So there we go. It's got to be worth doing. So in my next video, I'm going to show you six ways that we can ensure that the goals that we set for 2018 really are going to give us our best year ever. So until then, here's to successful property investing.